Okay, so how's everybody doing? <laughs> it's just a little inside joke, but uh, so this is part three. <laughs> this is part three of the uh, the uh, long dragging <laughs> bridge facade <laughs> series. Anyway. Um, Thanks for your patience on this one. I know there's people that are interested in it, but there's people that maybe aren't. And, but I just want to take this through to completion because um, some of these steps that I'm going to do, the, the, the pre-painting or like the base coat ones are important for the look that I want to achieve. Like as you look at this, uh, this is just pinstripe tape you can get from any auto store. It's fairly cheap by 3M, I think. And uh, I used it to line this model with as you can see and what I want to do is create that because this bridge was built in 1933 so they use planks for form boards not like they use plywood now back then they use planks like 2 by 10 2 by 12 against strong backs and then poured concrete right so what I want to do is put a textured paint on this and then I'll peel I'll show you what I'm going to use and and other alternatives what you can use and then I'm going to peel this off after put some some fairly robust or heavy coats on. Um, and then when I peel this off, it'll leave a sort of slight imprint. Uh, fine scale sort of ship modelers do similar things like this, where they do the uh, the steel plating on on larger one three fiftieth scale ship models and so on. It's, and it's a similar kind of application. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this particular product right here. And like I say, you don't have to. This is just some uh, essential gesso for acrylic or oil for painting white canvases that I just happen to have kicking around, right? Like we all have buckets of paint and stuff sitting around. Um, so I just want to use it up. Right. Did I talk about this already or did I not? Or was that in the first cut? Anyway, I can't remember, but I'll just carry on. Okay. So if I have a pick, I'll show you that might show this kind of relief here. You can see it actually on the texture of the actual bridge itself. And then in one of the other photos I'll uh, insert, it was the CPR bridge that was right beside this that connected to the Y that went underneath this on the BC Hydro Railway, which I sort of model, right? And I have a funny story to tell you about that as well. I was just talking to the brakeman who back in the 70s worked for well, originally CP, and then he got a job with uh, BC Hydro. And um, he was telling me that they used to push boxcars out onto the bridge just to get them out of the way so they could switch and flip cars around for the brewery back there. And he was telling me that they used to put these little, what they called torpedoes. They were like a, a, uh, a blank cartridge that they used in... Uh, a pop gun for you know emergency railway protocol well they would take these uh, cartridges and and uh, place them on the track under the wheel of the tail box car so, or so when they pushed it like they laid on the track so when they got to a certain point on the track a point of no return so to speak they would pop the the train would uh, wheel would crush the torpedo and uh it would pop and they'd know, okay, stop, right? Anyway, he told me that, <laughs> that the, that they, you know, because they didn't have radios back then or whatever, <laughs> they just were trying to save time. He said that, that the cars were being pushed back. The swing bridge was open. For, for ships or small ma or high masted ships and boats to go through and he said it just pushed the torpedo cylinder along the track it didn't pop and they pushed two box cars into the inlet <laughs> two of the cars went into the drink right and uh, he said he never got fired because it was just a new brakeman for a couple months there and i guess the conductor 
took the blow over that one. But anyway, I found that story kind of funny. We, he was talking to me this afternoon for about an hour on the phone, telling me all these railway stories, you know, like as a brakeman and stuff. And, uh, you know, these stories don't make the papers. Eh? Like, because, you know, the railway has a reputation. You just hear about them decades later or whatever. So he's retired and everything, so you can talk about it. But anyway, so I'm just going to uh, lay on a few coats of this uh, gesso. Uh, you can use any acrylic paint. It doesn't even have to be white. But I have it kicking around right, so I'm going to use it. And uh, so if I lay on a couple coats of this, and then when I go to peel the tape off, it's going to leave the... Uh, imprint right a sort of form board not perfect scale but enough of an impression remember we're after the impression right um, it'll leave enough of an impression you see so i do use a paintbrush after all don't i um, it'll leave enough of an impression so when we start to airbrush thin coats over top and throw washes on it it's going to uh, highlight those tape line impressions and simulate the, uh, the, the planking impressions that are still evident on that bridge 90 years later, right? Because this bridge was built in 1933 and yeah, I guess it's just over, you're getting close to 90 years old. So that'll add a, a nice extra texture to the bridge, you know? Okay.